Hi, Cy here from Music Radar. I'm joined today by Cy Trust, the editor for Future Music Magazine. Hi. And we are taking a look at the brand new Roly Blocks. Um, this one's the light pad. That one's the... Uh, this is the looper block. Looper block. And, and then we've one. got the live block here as well. Okay. So tell us a bit about the background of Roly. They're, they're quite a new company, aren't they? Yeah, so uh, UK-based company. Mm -hmm. They are best known for their... Seaboard range, which is yep. their um, kind of main technology. The Seaboard is basically this clever and innovative new take on the traditional piano format. Yep. So um, it's got what they call multi dimensional polyphonic expression or MPE, yeah. uh, which is uh, called five dimensional control. Right. Basically, the idea behind it is instead of a traditional piano where you've got just playing keys and sort of the velocity of how hard you play them, mm -hmm. you can bring in all of these string instrument-like yeah. uh, gestures, so you can have vibrato, glissando, you can move your fingers up and down the keys to control yeah. various parameters in whatever the sound is. Yeah. So they've got a few of these, the big high-end Seaboard Grand, which is several thousand pounds, really nice, really yeah. big. And then the Rise is the next the, one down? The Rise is, they've got a few of the Rise controllers which are more studio-friendly, a bit yeah. smaller, uh, work with uh, their VST instruments but yeah. I think even the smallest one of those which I think is 25 key is about 600 pounds it's a lot of money yeah so the a price of entry into the kind of seaboard world until now has still been pretty high mm -hmm. so this is now this is their entry level yeah so so blocks is obviously aimed at getting mass market people involved yeah so it's they call it a modular music studio which is a slightly misleading name, which is something we'll get on to. Yeah. But, um, there's kind of three parts at the moment to the blocks world. Yeah. There's this, which is the main thing, which is called the light pad block, which is a playing surface which incorporates that um, MPE, multi-dimensional um, control. Yeah. yeah. Then you've got the looper block, which is um, controls kind of transport things and recording and turns a click track on. Mm -hmm. And then you've got live block, which uh, is used for selecting scales, turning on arpeggiator, chord mode, things like that. Okay. So as you can see, performance-based things. They're yeah. all magnetic. Yeah, yeah, they clip together, magnetic. Yeah. They uh, Bluetooth. Okay. Um, so, which is why they're not connected to anything. Sure. And um, obviously, run on their own battery power. You charge this one. You connect that one, and then yeah. when you connect that, you're charging. Charge it via USB. Connect yeah. them up by magnet. Yeah. This is how, and then they um, share. Just, Power just like to that. say, they're not the strong, well they're quite strong, but you can see they're going to yeah, so, just drop off. Just so yeah, you can't go there. wave them out and no, expect them to. They're not, they're not, they're not designed for that, per se. But, but they will come Desktop, to together. They're absolutely solid. The, the question being what these are controlling. Yeah, now they have their app called Noise. Uh, yep, yeah. Noise is effectively the brain of the Blocks ecosystem. Yeah. So what Noise uh, is, is it gives you instruments to play mm -hmm. um, and uh, drum kits and you can record loops with it. It runs on iOS, so it's iPhone and iPad only at the moment. Yeah. I think they do want to bring out an, uh, an Android version, but which would be no word with some, but they know where, where that's coming. No, from. okay. So, talk us through the whys and wherefores in, in inside noise then. So, let's start with the good things. Okay. So the good things that's about ominous. Noise, yeah, it, it is a little ominous. <laughs> okay. So the good thing about noise is the sounds within it are actually really nice. Yeah. So what you get um, is in any noise session, you get three melodic instruments and one drum mm -hmm. instrument. The melodic instruments are powered by the same equator sound engine that sits in the big seaboard grand and, and also the VST. Stuff, yeah. which, is, which is really nice. So these yeah. sounds, so you can hear you get these, um, it's particularly good at these sort of really nice pad sounds. Yeah. You can uh, control these by dragging your fingers around various gestures. So uh, you've got yeah, polyphonic pitch bends, up and down, control various things. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's have a go at a different. So, so yeah, you're having to put quite a bit of pressure down on there. When you're yeah, I mean, these. although yeah. actually, yeah, but playing them, playing with the noise with the light pad block is actually quite nice yeah. and yeah, yeah it's it's a nice playing surface you'll see that um some 
squares on this grid are lit up, some aren't. Mm -hmm. That's because it's showing me a scale. Okay. Um, scales can be controlled from either using uh, the live block here. Yeah. So uh, what we can do is hit scale and flip through okay. uh, scales all within the not, app. We're not being told what those scales yeah, are. Yeah, so in the app we, we can open up the scale modes. Um, and then you can see here but we, we can are change. Now. Yeah, and then note. if you do that, you can still. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So uh, the live block also, well, the app also features a chord mode mm -hmm. and an arpeggiator, which yep. you, again, all of this you can do in the app, but the uh, live block makes it a bit easier. Yes. Uh, it's got this nice little feature of these um, these lights along the top, which will show you uh, a scale or chord shapes or the arp type yep. you've currently got on. So. So you do have a bit of visual feedback. You might not know exactly what something's called, but you know where you are. Yeah. You know, in in, in the menu, as it were. Yeah. So you can change your scale, play around like that. Um, then noise also does drum kits as well. Okay. So if we flip through, oh. so drum kits are divided into two types. There are uh, drum kits, which are classic. You're just firing one sound. Firing, yeah, yeah, drum pads. Yeah. Or what they call groove kits, which are effectively loop kits where you okay. hold down your fingers. With all these drums, you can, again, move your fingers around the light block to okay. play in interesting ways. So you've got a lot of processing going on still, which is nice. Yep. Um, but we, same with these. We're hitting some limitations now, aren't we? Because we cannot design our own kits here. Yeah, so right. like, like you said, starting to hit up the limitations of what mm -hmm. noise can do. So you can't um, swap in and out drum sounds. Okay. And as you, you've seen, you can manipulate various sonic parameters by dragging your finger around the light block. Yeah. But you don't really get any labeling on these. Um, we don't get any particular label on what uh, different drums are. So it's, there's a lot of kind of guesswork. Yeah, yeah. And then as I alluded to before, uh, so noise is built around creating loops, yeah, and the looping element of noise is not very good. Oh dear, yeah. show us how not very good it so, is. So, basically, you, as you can see here, you've got um, different rows of, uh, you've got your drum row along the top, okay. and you've got three right. monolic instruments. So that's, your, that's your song. Yeah, you moment. are limited to having just one drum and three. Oh right. So you can't change around. You can't swap it out. Okay. No. And there are more problems. So let's have a look at uh, recording a drum loop. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, we'll go on a groove kit, so make it nice and easy. Yeah, okay. Um, we'll hit record. You can, um, the uh, live block, loop block I'm in over here, Yeah. you can, you can hit record and you can turn yeah. click tracks that. and things on. Uh, we've not got that plugged in for the moment, but let me just show you. So we're gonna just, We've got a little drum loop. Yeah. The next so, thing you might want to do, you think, is we'll put some snare in there, maybe, or some yeah. dubs. Yeah. So yeah. what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit record. And as you can see, oh dear. it's cancelled it all out. And yeah. So basically, you you can't overdub anything. Oh, that's um, a shame. That's kind of like a basic feature, isn't it? Of most of most little sort of loop phrases, kind of. Yeah. Type so so you can't do overdubs, and there's a lot of other things you can't do. So you can't change the length of loops. We okay. can't um, adjust the volume of indi uh, individual instruments or drums within a drum kit. Mm. There's not really any editing of the actual sounds themselves. So you can buy sound packs of more yeah. drum kits and more uh, melodic presets. Yeah. And the sounds themselves are all really high quality. They're really nice sounds, but you don't get anything to really customise them to yourself. There's no changing of envelopes or filters no, or anything like no, that. You so can't really get deep so it's, you're kind of just playing presets. Uh -huh. Also, you're very much bound to this iOS device. So um, even when you've created your loops, if we go out to, this is the kind of opening window of mm -hmm. noise. You see you've got your, your projects here. Yeah. So if I want to get my loops I've recorded out of the app. Um, Presumably you want to, you know, mess about with them in the DAW or yeah, something so like that. Yeah, so if I hit share, my only option is share to Noise FM. And Noise FM is Roly's community site for blocks. Um, so you're effectively, you're publishing it live. Yeah, so if I share that, away. 
it's going live on their site yeah. with a Creative Commons license, so people can kind of they grab things and really, it. Yeah. which is which is cool. Yeah, and it's really nice to be able to do that. But having that as your only option is like as you make music at home, I make music yeah. at home. A lot of the stuff you mess about with isn't very good. You want to be able to kind of get it out of the app Have without, a tweak. yeah, you know, just, without just move things about a bit, you know, do some processing. So yeah, so there's no audio export. Um, we can't use interapp audio or audio bus to get things out either. Mm. So you can share or you can record stuff. As you can see, for this video, we're recording out of um, the headphone of the headphone jack of my iPhone. A dying breeze. Yeah. So <laughs> if I if I'd splash out on a slightly newer iPhone, we wouldn't be, be able to do that. So I mean, obviously, you can link up audio interfaces and things, but sure. it's not the most musician friendly way no, no. Um, these definitely feel like they're more performance based they're kind of a lower entry yeah level. I mean um, to be honest what they feel like to me is noise as nap feels like something that's been developed as a technology demo yeah to show off but that. without without the depth needed for music making Absolutely. so it's really I think if you are not used to making music, stuff mm -hmm. like these groove kits, like the ability to just hold your fingers down and make a drum groove is really cool. You, you can get, if you've you can get ever instant used, results. If you've ever used something like Machine or Ableton or something, or you're used to programming your own beats, yeah. there's not enough depth no. to hold. But there is a there is a, a sort of light at the end of a tunnel, yeah, possibly so there in the is, form of dashboard. There's a glimmer of hope in dashboard. So dashboard basically is... Uh, new application which mm -hmm. effectively allows you to configure blocks to work as a MIDI controller with third party software or your DAW or whatever. Yeah. So it's the, ga it's the gateway to, to the Yeah, so if you see this is dashboard here. Production uh, workflow. And what dashboard allows you to do is you can hook up the blocks either via um, Bluetooth MIDI or USB connection to mm -hmm. uh, your computer. Yeah. Uh, and you, within dashboard you have these kind of pre-built um, setups so kind of drum, drum pads, uh, like the melodic same melodic mode we're yeah. using to play stuff within noise. Mm -hmm. um, you've got sort of faders and mixers where you can uh, set it to control. That's right. And you can, I mean, you can hook up multiple blocks and have a bank of faders. If, yeah. If you so, so, wish. so what dashboard is basically doing is controlling how the blocks themselves mm -hmm. are set up. So already it sounds like it's opened up blocks. You know. It, it, to, to be way more useful than it is. In yeah. Noise, so it has. Say. So what? So it's it's configuring what the blocks themselves do, and mm -hmm. it configures the MIDI messages they send out. Yeah. You then have to uh, configure what. Uh, you then have to assign these for yourself yeah. within whatever software you're using. So even with dashboards, you kind of very much get out of it what you put in. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I, I've been using it with Bitwig here. Mm -hmm. uh, Bitwig Studio 2 is really good to use with these. Um, so for one thing, the multi-dimensional expression that the light pad, pad block uh, puts out, um, if I just put it back into melodic mode, yeah, uh, that works nicely with Bitwig because um, Bitwig accepts uh, MPE and it's got the expressions modulator here so I can okay, so set various uh, gestures to control, like I've got uh, velocity create, uh, controlling the resonance of a filter mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. uh, Bitwig's polysynth. Yeah. Uh, and dashboards, uh, blocks users get, along with dashboards, a three month license for Max. Mm -hmm. I can imagine Max users getting a lot out of these. Yeah. Um, dashboard also allows you to create your own setups via um, via coding. So I, I'm told oh, it's right. it's pretty simple coding. I it's it's out of my depth. Anyway. That's not this, for everyone, is it? Let's be fair. Yeah. I mean, I look at that and I'm seeing like the Matrix. Stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's but not for me. But 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 it does. It's there, and then people can use that, and they can get stuck in, and you know, like we say, it's it's definitely. It does a open up a lot. For these. Yeah. It's, it still feels like it. I want more out of it. Like uh, uh, one thing about playing um, the light pads with third-party software is it's not. I do, it doesn't feel as responsive as it does when working with noise. Okay. So I'd like an easier way to change the sensitivity. Okay. Um, you can kind of obviously set things up around that and work around it. Mm -hmm. But basically, with all of it, it's not particularly plug and play. It's worth noting as well with, with the loop block and the um, live block. Obviously, when working with noise, you've got chord mode and scale mode and arpeggiator. None of that transfers over okay. to. So what these 
effectively become is you is an array of on off buttons yeah sure. that you can configure to wherever you want yeah. which you know it's it has its uses i was using where these the other day i configured it to just have transport controls so i was recording a synth yeah. in the rear and being and able it's to wireless go. so you could yeah. be you know so it has its at uses. the drum kit as it whether, were, whether recording whether that's worth fine. 80 quid is another thing there is that but yeah, yeah it's not it's not plug and play right now um mm -hmm. it's worth noting that dashboards is in public beta still so Roly are accepting suggestions on yeah. what to do with it okay. um, so that that is sort of a caveat the flip side to that is that blocks have been on sale for well over six months now and I kind of feel that without dashboards as I've said like noise is fairly limited so this is kind of a necessary thing and it's a bit late in the but, game yeah you, you'd almost want this at the beginning and then yeah having them both yeah, find their own feet. You know, the, the the kind of iOS sort of platform side of it can kind of progress, and then you know the, the the more sort of serious production guys can can kind of also yeah. You know. So so what as we were saying, um, as we said before, the uh, feeling with blocks at the moment is that you've got this really kind of shallow entry level thing where you can just play sounds and you can kind of trigger little drum loops and if you've never made music using an iPhone before it's really impressive yeah then you've got this thing where if you're a max coder or if you want to create your own MIDI settings and go really deep deep you've got you that. could probably get a lot out of it but the person in the middle, middle yeah the everyday producer the kind of person who uses plug-in yeah. synths um, and you know understands MIDI uses MIDI but kind of just wants something that's a controller they can just hook up to something straight aren't away. really being served yeah so that's a shame. So yeah, so at the moment, Blocks has a number of problems. That's not to say that it is a write-off. No. So I very much feel that there is, in amongst all this, there is a very cool concept trying to get yes. out. Yes. Yeah. Like I said, playing the instruments within noise using the light pad is a really nice experience. It's really fun. You get good sounds out of it. If I was Roly, what I think they need to do is kind of completely rethink noise, completely rethink the system. If you sold these bundled with desktop plugins, like a desktop version, maybe a stripped down version of their Equator, Equator sound engine, yeah, yeah. or they now own um, F Expansion. There's some scope if there, you, surely. If you kind of bundle light pads and blocks with um, various plugins mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that they can work in a completely plug and play thing, and you get that multi dimensional thing straight yeah. out of the box so that a producer can use it, then you've potentially got a really cool thing. Because the idea of having a small, cheap, um, an accessible way to get into this whole multi-dimensional MIDI thing is a really good idea. Yeah, yeah. But this is not that at the moment. This isn't that at the moment. And so they've got quite a way to go, but it looks like they're heading in that direction. Um, we know that they will be developing more hardware. The hardware will be developed. The software will be developed further. So we can, like you say, we can only hope that they do bring the kind of the middle the middle ground producer guys in with with something that's a bit more a bit more pro in the noise department and yeah and hopefully they've yeah they pushed dashboard out and makes yeah. it slightly easier to kind of integrate it it's so in short would i recommend someone get in get blocks now no not right now would i recommend keeping an eye on it and hoping that it will become something good in the future yeah. definitely and it could be maybe within the next 12 months we don't know here's hoping but yeah we'll, we, we shall see Okay, so that's, uh, well, that's Blocks pretty much in a nutshell. Um, so be sure to like, subscribe, and uh, comment wherever you're watching this video right now. And don't forget to check out musicradar.com for all the latest news, reviews, and tutorials. Thanks.